What's up everyone, my name is John and this is John Paul Investing. So I wanted to share with you guys why exactly I talk about nano dimensions so damn much on this channel. They say if something's not broken, don't fix it. Um, I could be talking about a lot of other things that are popping off right now, but that would really be going against my grain as an investor. I want to be able to be consistent as long as they're good companies. Why am I going to ignore them? As long as they are showing, uh, you know, promising results, why would I turn my back on them? You know what I'm saying? Why am I going to turn my back on a diamond to pick up a pebble on the sidewalk? There's absolutely no other company in the world right now that can do what Nano Dimension is doing to the degree they are doing it at. There's one other company in the US, I believe, the way they're doing the 3D printed electronics is they're getting a flat surface and just laying out a one or two layer nanoconductive silver ink that just gets printed on top. Like if you've ever seen those, um, like the athletes that wear like the little bands, I forget what they call them, but it's like the tape that they put on sore muscles they just put like a like a strand here a strand here you know depends where they're sore it kind of looks like that they just lay out one layer and that's pretty much it. It's kind of a weird analogy, but that's the, you know, the visual for you. And another thing Nano Dimension has going for them is the fact that they already have existing sales. They have existing customers. So they have that proof of concept already established through things like the AME school. They've shared with us exactly, you know, what the process looks like for getting their 3D printers to work. They have shared with us a variety of ways that you can apply the Dragonfly's technology, whether it be RF antennas, semiconductors, flexible circuit boards, any high performance electronics device device that you can think of is more than likely craftable using nano dimensions additive manufacturing of electronics customers are using and creating stuff that nano dimension didn't even think was possible it's definitely something that doesn't look like it's going downhill and i am very interested in being involved for as long as possible they announced a couple acquisitions that are also going to be beneficial for them like deep cube and nano fabrica nano fabrica is also something you guys should definitely be looking at uh, what's very interesting about this acquisition specifically with nano fabrica they can actually print down to the micrometer and this is within a space of around five by ten by five uh, centimeters so the way Nano Dimension subsidiary Nano Fabrica works is the smaller the print, the more beneficial, the more lucrative, the more economical it is to print that uh, product. So for example, if you're working in a five by five by 10 centimeter area, if you print just one thing that's about, you know, five by five by 10, well, it, it's not really lucrative because you're only getting to print one thing. But if you can print something small enough to where you can fit a thousand of them within the five by five by 10, well, now you're talking because now you got a thousand of this little piece that would otherwise have costed, you know, maybe thousands of dollars to produce. They are actually more profitable and more lucrative the smaller you print. So this is also very exciting for um, Nano Dimension because now they can find a way to implement Nano Fabrica's technology with their own. While it may not be stock price that's improving, uh, the company itself is taking steps forward, which is, you know, all the reason I would personally need to be continuing to talk about them. So don't pay attention to all the FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Don't pay attention to all the bears. I had a comment saying that uh, Nano Dimension was gonna go back underneath a dollar. If it goes underneath a dollar, there is a lot of value arbitrage in buying Nano Dimension stock at underneath a dollar right now. Let's say Nano Dimension did go underneath a dollar. Would you pay $250 million to get, you know, over a billion dollars back? Would you do it? I think I would. So that's really the thing people don't understand is that if something is good, and you know it's good, why are you gonna drop it, turn your back on it for something else? That's what I really don't understand, but that's okay. That's why it's important to, you know, think for yourself. And I hope when you guys watch my videos that you kind of learn how to um, think for yourself whenever you look at uh, whatever it is you decide to invest in. If you do the research and someone else does the research, but both of you interpret the same information differently, well, one of you probably has an edge over the other. It is up to you to really interpret the information to where you have the advantage over the uh, other investor. Remember that Nano Dimension does not have an infinite number of shares. If Nano Dimension is desirable to us, we are all competing for the same company. Everyone is investing for the same pool of shares that are available, and it is finite. It is not infinite amount of Nano Dimension shares. So do your research and once you have the research done you can try to grab as much of that pile as possible but this is where i rest my case this is why i talk about nano dimension so much is because i really like the company and what they're doing i like what they're trying to do for the manufacturing industry and uh, essentially transform it make it a lot more efficient and green for the environment and their customers are actually working with their competition to try and create new things once you start to learn more about it it slowly becomes the more obvious answer for you know manufacturing in the future
So while our investment in Nano Dimension has been pretty successful before this bear market hit, I think there's another opportunity brewing in the market right now, and I wanted to share it with you right now. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my sponsors for the next segment of this video. The reason I took Halopal as a sponsor for this video is the fact that they have a pretty seamless product for connecting strangers. Halopal operates predominantly in East Asia and the Middle East. Halopal is a different approach to connecting with strangers who speak entirely different languages where there's actual language barriers. Barriers. And in the process, they are introducing people to cryptocurrencies at the same time, which is something I highly advocate for. Essentially, it is a social media platform for strangers to connect and interact with each other regardless of the language they speak. It has an auto translate feature within it where uh, whenever you speak within someone's chat, it'll translate it to the other language and then they can communicate with each other. The way HelloPal generates revenues is you are able to purchase credits, which uh, users can then share rewards with other users on the platform. You are able to donate gifts and incentivize users to continue to create content and Halopal keeps a percentage of all dollars involved in the process. But something I really like about the platform is actually the uh, involvement in cryptocurrencies. They're taking the steps to uh, allow people who do use the platform to be able to mine cryptocurrencies and have ownership, you know, actually own that cryptocurrency and have it in their wallets, which they can then transact with people who use the platform. And yes, they do have access to cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin. I think in the future, this is going to be super lucrative for anyone who does uh, uh, start to use the platform early the more involvement they do get into cryptocurrency and the further that uh, cryptos start to you know spike in value i like i don't like to use cryptocurrency actually I, I prefer the word crypto assets as long as they remain involved with all of these crypto assets you know bitcoin ethereum are the two main ones that they're going to be working with as these crypto values start to rise then the value proposition for hello pal starts to go up as well so i was going to share with you guys uh, some of the changes that have been made some of the progress that's been made in hello pal's company i was going to share with you stock price and where I think price could be going just based on purely technicals and how the future does look for this company as a whole. So Hello Pal is currently $1.16 per share as of this recording, we are still in this phase of consolidation. It has been sideways for the past few months. What you guys could be looking for is a break above $1.30. Once it breaches that, we could see a possible run past $1.40. But what I really would be looking for is once it breaks above this is for a retracement back to these levels and a new established area of support above $1.30. This will give investors more conviction to buy more HelloPal above $1.30 and ultimately start taking this back above the uh, $1.83 mark. I think HelloPal can possibly go above $2 per share. If we go back in time, we saw that their shares actually opened around $2.34. So seeing a $2 HelloPal would actually not surprise me because it is a penny stock, guys. You have to remember that these can be very volatile. This is why it's very important to do your research on these companies because if you have that fundamental understanding of the business and you have that edge over other investors who are specifically looking at just stock price, uh, you really can look beyond just purely stock technicals. If you know this company has an intrinsic value of at least two to three bucks, then uh, buying it at a dollar twenty cents or a dollar thirty cents makes a really you know marginal difference. Looking at the bigger picture, you know that this is going to be worth substantially more, so you are just going to buy it and accumulate it. As I said, I do not have any means of buying HelloPal as of as of this recording because I don't have a brokerage account with Fidelity yet. You could open an account with Fidelity and look for possibly investing in uh, other companies and the over-the-counter markets that you would not traditionally be able to invest in with uh, brokerages like Robinhood. It's as simple as going to Google and looking up Fidelity and it should be one of the first ones. You just click that and open a brokerage account with them, filling out this information and opening the account with them and doing the whole uh, authentication process. To invest in companies like HelloPal, this is the way to do so. The over-the-counter markets, guys, for the US markets is HLLPF. Look it up on your brokerage accounts and uh, take the time and do the research to figure out where exactly this stock is going. Remember that back in February, before their run, they did announce user Bitcoin mining within the platform. They were planning on expanding their partnership with Shanghai Yitang Data Technology, which is a mining initiative. This would ultimately give users of HelloPal the ability to participate in Bitcoin and Ethereum mining in a simple and convenient way. Users would be allowed to purchase Bitcoin and Ethereum mining machines and then have those machines hosted and operated by Yitang. The machines will be personally identifiable to the purchasers of the machines. So out of the 35,000 machines, let's say a thousand people own them. Each batch of around 35 machines would have a personal uh, identifier, which would identify who owns these machines and uh, how much of this cryptocurrency is going to each individual person. Users can expect the mined cryptocurrencies to be credited to their digital wallets each day. 
Uh, more details will be uh, shared with us later on. Helipal has been expanding at a pretty exponential rate. Throughout CV19 last year, um, they expanded 900% in their revenues. Of course, people were home. People really weren't doing much because the world was shut down. So a lot of people were on their phones and looking for new ways to be entertained. And uh, a lot of people discovered Helipel and were using that as a platform. They went from around 200,000 Canadian dollars to over 2.1 million Canadian dollars in revenues in just one year. So the trend looks like it is going to continue up and to the right. We still need to see some more figures presented by Helipel. But again, things are looking very good for Helipel as a business. Um, as you guys may know, Elon Musk has been shilling Dogecoin for, you know, probably a few weeks now. The free market decides what succeeds. And in this case, uh, a lot of people are looking at dogecoin litecoin i haven't seen too much of but that's not the point the point is hello pal has decided to allow people to get involved in both of these cryptos dogecoin and litecoin and as you guys may know these are markets that could grow exponentially over the next 12 months no one knows for certain but i mean as long as people keep continuing to buy into these crypto assets then there's a chance that they continue to go up and to the right but you still have to know the uh, fundamentals for these cryptos so um, do your own research, just like anything else, really. So Helipal entered another agreement with the same company, Shanghai Yitang Data Technology, to acquire an initial 51% interest in over 12,000 mining rigs dedicated to mining Dogecoin and Litecoin. The consideration for the transaction is around 1.5 million Canadian dollars payable in cash and 1.8 million units of the company's stock valued at around $2.25 million dollars as of now each consideration unit has a deemed value of a dollar 25 cents accompanied with one half of one common share purchase warrant of the company this means that uh, over the span of two years uh let's say in may of 2023 if helipal is a four or five dollar stock they are guaranteed to acquire helipal's shares at two dollars a piece but after the two years pass those uh, warrants expire and they can't do anything they can't buy the shares so they will have around two years to decide whether they want to exercise these or not and I'm talking about Shanghai Yitang Data Company. Something else that you guys should know about Helipal is that they are starting to see more live streams outside of China. It seems like Helipal has hit some kind of inflection point where now they're starting to see more non-China users as opposed to having a predominantly Chinese uh, user base earlier in 2020, late 2019. Now guys, remember this video is sponsored. I think the main thing that's going to allow Helipal to catch traction is the fact that they are being uh, trying to get so involved in cryptocurrencies. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Watching. If you like this video, make sure you guys hit that like button. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell notification to get notified when I make videos just like this one. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.